the mysterious life of a CNC service technician. Close, but no cigar. He shows up to my shop, pulls out his phone and goes, I don't know what to do, Bosh. Okay, better leave. I'm the CNC repairman. Are you a belt? I'm gonna show you how the Niagara Falls is full of What does a CNC service tech do? First thing on the list, set up new and used machines. Techs do a lot of that, and there's a lot that goes into a setup. So let's say, brand new machine, you work for an OEM, and the machine gets ordered, gets scheduled, the customer is supposed to have power and water and air, they never do. Riggers, truckers, you're there waiting around, waiting around. Okay, you're a service tech, waiting around. We do a lot of waiting around. They unload the truck, place the machine, and of course they place it too high, so we raise it, lower it, fit the coolant tank, check the power, check the phasing, turn the machine on, put in the unlock codes if there are any, undo the shipping brackets, jog it all the way around, hook up all the hoses, hook up all the externals, level the machine, do a break-in program, make sure the program transfer works, the tool changer is hooked up, so that would be new install, training, things like that. Used machines, uh, you yeah. are mystery box <laughs> machine shows up and uh, what doesn't work on it <laughs> or uh, how do you run the thing where are the books so all those same things so we make sure there are no leaks we make sure everything runs the tram we check the level we check the squareness we, we level a lot of machines cnc tech spend a lot of time on the floor turning wrenches and i just got a new wireless level that's a lifesaver and a port of power but we, we spend a lot of time working on like machines that haven't been set up yet, haven't been, aren't running, and so we make them run and we have to leave and come back and order parts, so new installs, used machines. The next one that kind of came to mind pretty quickly, more than even that, fix tool changer issues. Ooh, you would think tool changers are, are pretty consistent. They're consistent at breaking. You have this sloppy thing that's moving and switches and tools have to fit in there, right, and chips and coolant and, People run them too hard and spindles that are worn out and draw bars that are bad. And I'm talking like Hitachi Sikis, old Gidding and Lewis, machines that are Cincinnati's, Ouya's. I mean, I think I did a whole video on old machines. Like all those old machines, the tool changer logic is a pain in the neck. I just worked on a Toshiba that had switchboard this big. I'll find a picture. I mean, it had like nine switches in the bottom and nine switches on the top. And the book says, how to troubleshoot a 16 step tool change. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 16 steps. Step one, G30. Step two, orientate spindle, but I got a spindle drive alarm. Step three, magpot weight check. Step four, I mean, I could go on. Uh, magpot up, magpot down, double arm, traverser arm, uh, clamp unclamp, I mean, all of those things. You think a CNC would be complicated with running a spindle and X and Y? Yeah, that includes a lot of ones and zeros and the processor and the computer has to read the code. But like as far as inputs and outputs and mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical, a whole lot goes on when the draw bar opens and it puts a tool away and picks up another one. So if you're wondering if I'm gonna be a CNC tech or you're a CNC tech and you're laughing because you're like, yeah, God, I hate tool changers. Like they're just a pain in the neck. Always working on that one that the chip gets on the switch and it's a pain. So. Lots of tool changer issues. Next one that came to mind that, that I've done in the past year. Coolant issues and coolant related issues. So a hose breaks in the head because it's 20 years old and it's never been replaced and coolant's pouring down and they're still running. Like, oh, it's good enough. I redirected the nozzle. No, it ain't good enough. You're gonna fry something. Uh, because of coolant, you have all sorts of leaks. We have to fix leaks crawl under the machine because of leaks. We have coolant getting into a motor, burning up a motor, and then the cable over 20 years degrades, and now you're shorting out the cable, and if the cable shorts out, you're probably gonna blow an amplifier, so now we're in the cabinet changing the amplifier and changing the cable and the motor, too. I'm ranting. Motor, cables, hoses, leaks, way covers. That's all combined. The next one, probably one of my favorite. I really like these type of issues, and you may not, but that's troubleshooting electrical issues. Uh, an issue I went and worked on uh, Mori horizontal pallet pool with a electrical 
what was it? An electrical safety circuit that had as many pages as this and it went all over the machine through the over travel switches, through four door sensors and e-stop circuitry. And when the machine, we had a random e-stop alarm that you couldn't trace and the electrical schematic didn't match. And so I started ohming things out and then you had to chase wires and you know, you don't know if, you don't know what you're reading and so you're just guessing with your meter and guess and check. And I finally found a switch that was full of coolant but the machine had a switch for X, Y, Z, B, home, all the doors, over travel switches. Each one had two over travel switches. So electrical issues, not common, common, but when they are common, when you do run on one, they're difficult and it's lengthy. You get out your meter, you get out, hopefully the electrical schematic or you make one. Usually you don't need an oscilloscope for that, but I like troubleshooting with oscilloscopes or two meters, a mega, electrical issues. Another one that, that I see less, more often than electrical issues is mechanical issues. So when I mean mechanical issues, geometry, parts out of tolerance, or finish issues. And that usually leads to a mechanical repair. Now it could be an electrical repair, and that would involve a ball bar, a uh, test bar if they're worried about it, a uh, granite square. Someone just runs to me and goes, having a finish issue, let's say mill. First thing I'm gonna do, check the grip force. I have a video about that and I'm gonna run a ball bar. If the grip force is bad, you need a new draw bar, dude. And we do a lot of draw bars. Uh, if the geometry is bad in X, Y, and usually the part they're complaining about finishing a bore or something, then we're gonna troubleshoot ball screws, which I have on my list, ball screws, bearings, and spindle replacement. Not as common. Many, many times you're gonna be working on a machine that's 15 years old and the ball screws are original. And if they run the thing hard production, you might be doing a ball screw replacement or a thrust bearing, but that's not every day all the time. Electrical components, changing uh, amplifiers. So in these machines, the vector drives go bad. Uh, servo amps, they just, they wear out. The transistors can't last forever. Take a break. Hey, Matt. Did we just ruin something? No, 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 no. They're laughing their heads off because <laughs> electrical components. So power supplies, amplifiers, sometimes like the, the main motor control board. On these machines, kind of more often than on Japanese FANUC controllers, but stuff happens. So that's, that's not as often. LCD screens, buttons go bad, keyboards go bad. That, that type of stuff is not as common. On average, we do a lathe alignment once a month. It's either me and my dad or some of our other guys. Lathe alignments. People crash their lathes. It, it just happens, you know. Oop, oops, oh, he stopped. And, and the turret's out and you hit a hard jaw and I'm cutting a taper and the turret doesn't clamp right and the tailstock's not lined up right. And oh man, so those are bigger jobs. I mean, to do a good lathe alignment, you get a PM because everything's dirty and I can't work on it while it's full of crud. So we do a lot of cleaning. Sometimes we're high paid janitors. Lay the alignments happen pretty frequently. Uh, draw bar replacements, I touched on this, but if you have a lot of old machines in your territory, you're gonna be replacing draw bars, especially if people are running high production. They're, they're a kind of a consumable, a wear item. Otherwise, the other thing I do now and then is the, the way loop stuff. People's way loop tanks get plugged. The other kind of last area of a service tech is PM work, and that's, that's kind of gravy work, except for when it's not. I've wrecked PM several times. Like, so I'm there, all I'm supposed to do is change the oil, clean it, run a ball bar, go through the PM checklist. They gotta get their ISO 9000 cert. There has to be, you know, proof that the machine was within spec or hasn't gotten worse. And all I'm supposed to do is just come work eight hours, leave. Gravy, right? No, I decide to take something apart that looks like it, it was going bad. And next thing I know, I broke a belt or one time I really messed up a brake cylinder for the C axis. I took it apart, bad juju, took it apart and accidentally hit the brake and bent the finger. Now we make a replacement finger. Oh, and then it, and then it bent the whole gear. It's like a three day job out of a PM. They were not happy. Like if you're working on a PM and you, they, 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 you say you need new belts, don't do it, come back later. Like you've probably got something else scheduled. So don't turn PM work, this is just a side note, into work. If, if you're at a PM and they need a new fan, go, I have to come back with a fan. You're running now, you need to run tomorrow. Here, for instance, you take the fan apart and you realize the motor smoked. You'd be better off to let them figure out the motor smoked when they run it. Or, or you find something that's really bad and then it's bad, just 
Make note that that's my experience. Now I'm gonna tell, I'm not gonna just walk away, but I'm gonna go, hey, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. I don't want, I don't want to cause issues I'm trying to think what other times. You, like for instance, your turret's not clamping right and you're looking at a PM and you're going, all right, it's noon, I got time to pull this turret and fix it. No, you don't. So that's me, that's what a CNC tech does. If there's something I missed or uh, you think, hey, I do a whole bunch of this. I don't know why you didn't mention that. Retrofits, I don't do retrofits. Sorry, we'll never do those. Never, ever, ever. That, that's, that's pretty much it. A quick plug, who I am, I'm the CNC repairman. I supply parts for these machines, we do electronics. We're here to help you, call us, we answer the phone, we answer our emails, we ship overnight. I'm here to help you, that's our whole motive. I'm out in the field a lot of the time, but I can take calls, you might reach somebody in our office. I hope you had fun listening to this video. I had fun ranting and it's uh, just kind of how we work here. So go get a machine, go be a service tech. I wish you the best of luck. Call me, I'll help you. Thanks for watching.